Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 3, Lesson 10 on calculating slope. So we're going to calculate slope from two points today. Some of this we've already kind of touched on in previous lessons just a little bit. So let's just see how this works. First of all, a little review on integer operations. You are going to take a look at values A and B and find values that make sense to make them equal to something like that one there. And so perhaps for A and B, you said, well, let's just try if A equaled negative four and B equaled two, you end up with negative four over two, which reduces down to a negative two, and you're good to go. Over here to get a positive two, maybe you just said A is four and B is two, which becomes four over two, which is simply two there. And then we're looking at to make a negative two with doing subtraction, that becomes a little different. Maybe you have a, uh, a is equal to two and B equals four, in which case you'd have two minus four, which equals a negative two, that could work. There's a zillion different possibilities there, so you decide what you wanna have for that one there, as my morning coffee is brewing in the background. Here we go, 10 two toward a more general slope formula. Here we go, Point, plot the points one comma 11 and eight two and use a ruler to draw the line that passes through them. So we go 1, 11 here, and we go 8, 2 here, and then we're going to use a ruler or a straight line like this. So we're going to plot a line that goes through them like so. Great. So that's what I have. There's my line. That's what I got. Without calculating, do you expect the slope of the line through 1, 11, 8, 2 to be positive or negative? So taking a look at that, do we think this is gonna have a positive slope or a negative slope? Seeing how this line seems to be going down, we would probably guess that it's gonna be a negative slope. Don't know yet, but probably gonna guess that's gonna be the case. The next question, number three, says, well, let's go ahead and calculate the slope. Let's figure out, calculate it, what is it gonna be? Remember that calculation is gonna be looking at the, the difference between the values there, okay? The, the change between the y divided by the change in x, right? So it's the change of y divided by change of x. So in our case here, here is our one comma 11 and our two, oh, sorry, eight comma two are our numbers there. And so it depends on, on how you wanna set this up. Okay, it really doesn't make a big difference. So let me show you an example. If I use my first point, if I did 11 minus the second point, 2 over 1 minus 8, I end up with 11 minus 2, which is going to be 9, and then 1 minus 8, which is minus 7. Okay. So I have one, nine over seven, and it's a negative nine over seven. All right, let's compare that real quick to if I went the other way, I went the second value, which is two minus 11 over eight minus one, which gives you negative nine over seven. Now, is there a real difference between those two numbers right there? Well, for the most part, we'd say, nope, it's still a negative nine sevenths, a negative nine sevenths. But if you're someone who's really literal with this stuff, you might think that, oh, this is going, if you're thinking about ups and downs and lefts and rights with how you do slope, maybe, then you would say, oh, that's going up nine and going to the left seven. Well, that's not quite what we're saying here because we can tell this is a slope that's gonna be negative. We're gonna be going down so we know that in terms of what we're doing, we're gonna be going down nine and then over seven. And when we take a look at this graph right there, what we see is that indeed, we're going down from one to, sorry, from 11 to two, 11 to two here, we're going down nine units here, going down nine units there, and then we're going over seven right so that's what's happening in terms of visually what's going on in the picture there so you're probably better off right better off doing the second one minus the first one in terms of points there but either way you end up with the same thing you just have to kind of get your brain around which way 
what does this actually mean, okay? Let's come back to that later on. Let's look for, are you ready for more? We usually skip these, but I'm gonna do this today because I'm gonna skip 10-3, that's an activity in class. It says find the value of k so that the line passes through each pair of points that has, been given, that has a given slope. So we have a missing value, so we wanna find a slope of two. I'm gonna go ahead and do numbers one and four as an example here, all right? So to solve this here, the idea is I take the second value again, 14 minus the first value, two, that's the y's, divided by 11 minus the k, and that should equal two, that's my goal. Well, 14 minus two is 12, and then I have 11 minus k, and that needs to equal two, okay? So for this to actually equal two, think of it from just this standpoint here. How do I get that to be a, tw a, a two? 12 divided by what number is gonna be equal to two? All right, thinking about that. 12 divided by what's gonna be two? Well, I think I can go this way. Two times a number should equal 12. In that case, I'm gonna aim for a six. I was doing some mental math there, but I'm writing out my mental math, my thinking. So I'm aiming for a six. Well, down below, I don't have six. I have 11 minus K. I want 11 minus K to equal six. That's my goal. So to do that then, I'm going to subtract by 11, subtract by 11, negative K equals negative five. K is gonna be equal to five. And I can plug five in there. And sure enough, when I plug five in there, 11 minus five is six, All right? So 12 minus five over six and that's gonna be equal to two, that works out just fine. So in this case here, k is equal to five for the first one, for number one, okay? That's kind of a long way of doing that there. You could, if you chose to, you could multiply this times that and then work out kind of algebraically how that would work there, that could work. There's probably other ways of doing it, that's just what came to my mind first. Okay, looking at number four, the same idea for four, right? We have this time here, we have K minus four over minus three minus a negative one. All right, so it needs to equal negative one over two. All right, so we have on top K minus four, it stays the same. Negative three minus a minus one, that's like adding, right? It becomes adding. So minus three plus one is minus two. And this is gonna equal negative one over two. Okay, and so here's where we are right now. So we have K minus four, looking good. So what I'm gonna do this time, let's go ahead and multiply by a minus two. So k minus four is gonna be equal to a negative a half times a positive, a uh, negative two is gonna end up with a positive one. Now I'm gonna add four, add four, and k equals five. All right, so that's what we did for the number four one. So a couple different strategies there to help solve that. You can decide what works for you. The idea is figuring out what that point's gonna be so you end up with that slope. If you need to do some guess and checking, that can work too, up to you. For 10-3, you're doing this with a partner in class. It says that your teacher is gonna give you a design or a blank graph, and you don't show them, and you're gonna, if you have the design, you have to communicate what your partner should draw. You're gonna have some kind of shape there, design there, and your partner's gonna draw that based upon the description you give them. And so give them as precise details as possible so they can draw those points and the graph the right way. So that's something you're doing <laughs> in class today. So again, as a summary, this is today's lesson here. We can see that what we do today is find the slope, that's that the slope is what? The vertical change divided by the horizontal change. That's what we do when we're looking for a slope value to find out what a slope is gonna be, right? So take a look right here. When we have this slope here of negative half, notice that they don't put the negative next to a number, right? The negative's out in front and the slope is a half. That's what's happening there. It's just implied that when we set a negative, we know we're going to go decreasing, we're gonna be going down, and that's just what you're gonna do again and again. 
Let's take a look then at tonight's homework, calculating slope using some given numbers. For number one, for number one A, okay? And again, we can use the second one, the first one, it's just the difference, it really doesn't matter. This time, let's try the other way. Let's do six minus four, six minus four over two minus eight. Six minus four is two, and two minus eight is negative six. So you end up with a negative one third. Could I go the other way? I sure could. I could do four minus six over eight minus two, and that'd give me a negative two on top and a positive six on the bottom, which is still negative one third. It works the same, you get the same solution either way. Okay, so over here we could do a, um, I like to go to the second one, that's just me. I could do one minus, in this case here is seven, over one minus a minus five. Sorry, I couldn't find. Minus five, and then I have, sorry about that, negative six, and then one minus minus one is plus, so one plus five is six. Negative six over six is negative one. And over here, same idea, I'm gonna do minus eight minus a minus three over a minus two minus a minus six, a negative six. That becomes negative eight plus three, which is negative five, and negative two plus six, which becomes a positive four and that's going to equal negative five-fourths. Okay, so that's my slopes for A, B, and C. All right, next one, match each pair of points uh, to the slope of the line that joins them. All right, so here we go. So let's do this one here. We can do first to second, doesn't matter. So 10 minus 2 over 9 minus 7 becomes 8 over two becomes four, A. Over here, we have negative 11 minus minus five, negative five over ne uh, negative eight minus a minus one. And really it doesn't matter first or second as long as you keep the order the same on your tops and bottoms, right? So negative 11 plus five becomes a positive, sorry, becomes a negative six and negative eight plus one becomes a negative seven, and that becomes a grand total of six sevenths because the negatives go away, I'm left with six sevenths. Six sevenths matches D. All right, the next one we do a, let's go here, negative six minus three over five minus two becomes a negative nine over three, which becomes a negative three. Just choice B. For C, we do a three minus a minus one, and then a six minus a five, and then that becomes three plus one is four, six minus five is one, and we're left with four again for A. And for number five, we do seven minus two over four minus six, becomes five over negative two or negative five halves, which is choice C. All right, turn the page for our last couple here. Draw a line with the given slope through the given point, and what other point is on that line is the idea. So point A is here, and we're gonna be looking at point A, and yep, and we're looking at a slope of negative three. Okay, so slope of negative three means I'm gonna go down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. So I'm gonna go all the way through point B, and I can draw that line like so. So there's A to B. Not a very good line there, sorry about that. <laughs> so it goes through B. Okay, the next one, and this is our line for line A. Point A, and we're gonna go down negative one over four. So negative one over one, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four. So we're going there. So this one's gonna go like so. 
and this is line B, and it's going through point D. For C, we're going to start at C, we're going to go negative 1, 2, so negative 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. So we don't hit the B, but we definitely do hit the E in this case. And that's line C, which hits line, point E. And if we're at E, we go down 2 and over 1, 2, 3. And 2 and 1, 2, 3. If we go there to there. This is our line D. And we're going to hit line B as well. Okay. Just kind of jot those down and off you go. Okay, make a sketch of a linear relationship with a slope of four, that's our m value, and a negative y-intercept, so a negative b value in terms of our y equals mx plus b. And show how you know the slope is four and write an equation for the line. Okay, so we can draw a line like this. I can pick a point, let's say I pick a point at negative two, okay? So y equals four, that's my slope, x minus two. So I'm gonna make that my equation. Why? Because I just chose negative two. Could I pick negative one? Yeah, I could pick any negative value I want there. Doesn't make a difference, okay? So one, two, zero, one, two, three, four. Here's one, two, three, four, moving up. And here's one, two, three, four. So my slope is going, I'm starting here. I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and over one, right there, one, two, three, four, and over one for there. And so my slope looks something like this, and I'm going up four over one, up four over one, and so everything makes sense because I'm going up four for my slope and running over one there. And so my rise is four, and I'm good to go. And my negative value is for my y-intercept, and everything makes sense. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day.